Major funding for these programs is made possible by grants from Capital One Bank, New York Community Bank, Eastern Consolidated, M&T Bank, Customers Bank, Meridian Capital Group, Terra CRG, The Wickoff Group, Perfect Building Maintenance, Chase Commercial Term Lending, Chase Commercial Mortgage Lending, Genova Burns. Additional support is made possible by AKA Hotels, Corman Communities, AmTrust Title, Aerial Property Advisors, AVR Realty Company, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Bank Leumi USA, Briarwood Organization, CBRE, Citizens Bank, Connect One Bank, Colliers International NYC, Collins Building Services, CPEX Real Estate Services, Dime Savings Bank of Williamsburg, Douglaston Development, Levine Builders, Fisher Brothers, Flushing Bank, Friedman, LLP, Hendler Real Estate Organization, Hersha Hospitality, HAP, Investment Developers, Hodges Ward Elliott, Inc., Investors Bank, iFunding, James D. Kuhn Real Estate Center at Syracuse University, Kilroy Architectural Windows, Madison Realty Capital, Matone Group, Mercantile Commerce Bank, New Banks, Newmark Grub Knight Frank, Optimum Window Manufacturing Corp., People's United Bank, Pulsinelli, Rosewood Realty Services, SJP Properties, Sterling National Bank, Stonehenge Partners, TD Bank, The Continuum Company, The Knackle Group at Cushman and Wakefield, The Meringoff Family Foundation, The Moynian Group, and These Friends. The office market in New York. Is it good? Is it bad? People are leasing space. Buildings are selling. I don't know the answer. So today I've assembled these distinguished business leaders to provide their insight on the market. My guests include Norman Sterner, who is the founder, CEO, and president of MHP Realty Services. Ted Coltis, who is the executive vice president for leasing for the Paramount Group. And last but not least, a man who's been with me since the initial time that I started 15 seasons ago, Stephen B. Siegel, chairman of Global Brokerage at CBRE. So since you are the oldest and the sage of it all. He's not the oldest. He's not the oldest. (laughs) No, no. I'm going to save him. (laughs) Okay, we're going to save him. Okay, how is the market in this year? I mean, you know, there's Hudson Yards, there's downtown, there's Manhattan West. There are companies going to the boroughs of the Bronx even. You remember your home place, you know, and going in the industrial space. Companies? Oh, industrial, okay. So how, how do you see the office leasing market? Well, I personally find the office leasing market strong, or I should say different strong. Uh, number one, let's make it clear, nobody's holding back because of any economic fears. There's no bubble in the office market uh, imminent. So anybody who says that really doesn't understand the market. There's a significant number of large transactions. Uh, there is a flight to increase density, so there are shrinking transactions. Uh, you know, 800,000 foot tenant creates more efficiency, goes to 660. Um, as a result of some of that flight to density, there will be some vacancies, but compared to a 400 million square foot office market, the, uh, as uh, Mark Twain said, the uh, rumors of my death are greatly exaggerated. The same thing, ref- same thing applies to the office leasing market. Rents are holding, Midtown South is solid as a rock, downtown's on friggin' fire, M- millions of square feet of tenants <coughs> going down, very few leaving anymore. Uh, and, and this vacant space that will uh, probably be the result of this densification, will be filled by these tenants who can't find this kind of space they may want in Midtown South anymore, or either don't want to go, or they're, very soon there won't be sufficient space downtown. So I believe the reported vacancies, and I think one of our publications is doing an article on big blocks of space in Midtown, 
uh, I think they'll be absorbed. I, I know of 4 million square feet of tenants looking for space in Midtown right now. How do you look at the co-working market? I and you as an owner, do you like it? Would you put them in? And you're, you're a major owner and you're a REIT, you know, you have both types. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we're a, little, a bit cautious at this point, I think, about, about someone like WeWork just because they've grown so much. Um, it's still, you know, a newer, a, newer, uh, a newer phenomenon, but I do think that they have a niche and I, I think they're here to stay. Uh, but what we're seeing just, and, and I think it, it builds on, on what Steve said, it, it's just the market's real solid. And in the past, it used to be in New York, especially, it was driven a lot by financial services firms. And we're seeing a wide variety of tenants now c coming into New York, leasing space, um, you know, uh, healthcare, uh, technology, or all these, all these tenants are now coming in and cr calling New York their headquarters, their home. And, and they're the ones that have kind of picked up the slack that we've seen financial services kind of back off for the last seven, eight years. I think even financial services now is starting to come back. So the combination of those three things really makes New York a solid market and still a place where people have to be. I remember uh, it was in 2002 or 2003, Norman was on a show with me, and he had one building in Lower Manhattan, and at that time he wanted to get rid of it. And he said, you know, I'm not coming back. And then last year he made a big decision and has taken over and really done a great job with 180 Maiden Lane. Mm -hmm. How do you see downtown? You know, you were... Uh, you weren't that positive for many years about downtown. Uh, um, that, that's, that's not factually correct. Uh, we had 44 Wall, we had 30 Broad, we had 22 Cortland, uh, we had an 83 Maiden. We had a bunch of buildings down there prior to 9-11, had nothing to do with 9-11. There was no thought of a 9-11. We simply started selling those properties and moving further uptown. Um, when 9-11 happened, we still had 30 Broad, and a few years later, we sold that at a profit. Um, it was just opportunity. The opportunity that's come from 180 Maiden Lane to us, um, a 35-year-old building um, sitting on the water with enormous uh, capability and space. To give you an idea what we think of the market, we took on 800,000 feet of vacancy. Uh, we had a single tenant that, in fact, Steve reps. Um, we've rented 240,000 feet in the last seven months after we got through with our uh, $32 million uh, capitalization program. Spectacular job on we, the lobby. We, we have redone a brand new lobby. Uh, we've moved the equipment up to the third floor. We've got a uh, cafeteria that feeds 200 people. We've got an uh, auditorium that seats 250 people. And we're, we're now dealing with an existing tenant to blend and extend uh, that we're hoping happens. And we're kicking around with a 300,000 foot tenant. Um, we signed over 40,000 feet last month that we have been negotiating with. Um, we probably see five tenants a week at 180 Maiden Lane. Now, it's incredible. Question. When somebody's looking for space today, are they are they open to all of the opportunities? You know, downtown, Hudson Yards, Manhattan West, you know, Avenue of the Americas. You know, every much more so. Every yeah. reasonably sized tenant yeah. looks at all the markets. And and here you go into size matters. Yeah. Uh, when when you're talking about a ten to thirty thousand foot tenant, which is what our uh, niche and wheelhouse is. Uh, they, they, they don't have um, the entire city market. When you're talking about 50 to 100 to 200,000 footers, um, both of these guys have the capability of showing them the entire New York City market. Well, I, think, <coughs> I think just like pe people will, will live almost anywhere <coughs> now in Manhattan, and you're not saying that's a bad area to live in. I, I think it's the same way on the office side, and people will, 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 will go. Well, office place. But, you know, down, yeah. but downtown, you know, as Steve was saying prior to the show, you talk about the transportation hub. Yeah. With what you have now, I mean that that is there's none better. Right, there's none there's none better, better. The and, and the yep. way it's been coordinated. I had to yep. recently go to uh, Jersey City. I went down through the transportation hub, then to the exchange place. You know the path. Everything is yep. is great over there. Right? Fourteen subway lines, um, service uh, retail, uh, first uh, first class retail. I mean Prime Westfield's going to open up with. Half a million square feet of every store you can possibly name, from you know moderate to high end. Brookfield Place has done an amazing transform, for, for transformation from their retail and restaurant chains, and Goldman Sachs also uh, put that on the map. 
Um, as Ted said, the residential, the Tribeca, the Brooklyn Heights, all these easily commutable uh, locations. I, I gotta retract a little bit. Not every tenant of any size or consequence will look all over. There are some sole proprietorship, so the CEO who's basically the czar, and he'll say, I'm not going to X, Y, or Z. Don't show it to me. I'm representing tenant now for half a million square feet. who made it clear up top. I'm not going downtown, and I'm not going to Hudson Yards. So just leave that out of your uh, your process. Uh, that's rare, though. Um, and this yeah. is just, so it does happen. And, <clears throat> and even with downtown, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's just the tip of the iceberg with, with, with a lot of the stuff that Steve mentioned happened on the west side. Uh, downtown now the east side you've, you've got water street the whole water street renovation uh, south street seaport being renovated most of the, the residential i mean a, a lot of the wall street the certainly as you get further east mm. has, has become residential and so 60,000 so, so whole area tenants yeah downtown howard Hughes is um tenants allocated or residents i'm sorry Did you say tenants or residents residents, residents. residents. 65,000 yeah. residents yeah right yeah howard Hughes is uh, committed oh, almost a billion dollars to the south street seaport um, and, and the construction that's going on downtown. Uh, mind you, that's where the city started. Yeah. And, um, what about Jersey 50, City? 55 uh, water I mean, just renewed McGraw Hill for a million square feet. They yeah. mm -hmm. Staying in place. I mean, what, what about, you know, the, the always the question of the competition of the Jersey waterfront? Because there's still reasonable space, and New Jersey provides some ex extensive uh, initiatives. Yeah, you can live rent free for 10 years in New Jersey. Uh, right now, how long the program lasts, I don't know. But it's still competition, but it's really not competition. The the tenants that take a significant portion of their requirements and move to Jersey City are not they're not competing with Manhattan. They have made the decision to take that requirement right. out of the right. city. UBS, it's Bank of America, both signed for 400 plus thousand feet in New Jersey, one in Hoboken, one yeah. in Jersey City. They weren't, that, that was never going to Manhattan. That was going somewhere, maybe North Carolina. Right, they're not, they're not headquarters. No. No, it's, it's back office. office. It's back right, office. That's for and, sure. and Knight Capital moved back in from Jersey City. The, to the stationary of major companies has to have New York City on, on the bottom of its logo. Um, it's, it's just one of the things that... Since you're active and you, you, you keep abreast of the investment sales, where are office buildings trading at today? How do you see the market over there? The, the lower end of the market starts at $700 a foot, uh, which is uncanny to me. Um, the, the top of the market... Uh, so you're talking about a B building, a B minus building perhaps. In an, in an off market, uh, in, in an off area Sorry. market, on a side street on the west side, and they're asking seven seven fifty a foot. Uh, avenues are 1300 a foot. I mean, the new $1,000 a foot is now $1,300. Um, the construction that's going on, we, we, we follow the big kids. You take a look what SL Green is doing at One Vanderbilt. You take a look what l and is doing at 425 Park. You take a look what Clarion is doing at 390 Madison. Um, this is all 1000 to $2,000 a foot when you get done, and they're three years away from a rent check. Yeah, but they're getting the, <coughs> they're, they're getting the rents, at, certainly at 425 Park, to justify what they've done. And the, uh, I mean, but Vanderbilt, one, an one, Vanderb of, one Vanderbilt, you, you only have TD right now. Yeah, but so that was but because they took TD are, out in order to sell no, no, the site. I, I'm in a, favor of what these guys are doing. I, I think it shows um, enthusiasm for the future of this city. Uh, when, when you got two or three of, you know, the largest owner-operators uh, looking out three years in advance for a rent check, and they're still making that kind of capital investment, I think it's... Uh, One Vandy is probably possible. the first new building in Grand Central in, what, 40 years? 40 years. Oh, sure. Yeah. And it will be, if you've seen the renderings and the yeah. presentation, it's spectacular. What's happening with Times Square? We were talking about it before. Uh, you know, Ernst & Young is moving out, a couple of others. There's a question of Reuters on their own lease. Uh, mm -hmm. Times Square is going to have a, a, an issue. Yeah. Uh, and not so much because it, it would... It would my opinion would apply to its vacancy the same as Avenue America's, except for the environment is changing there again. It's becoming a little honky tonky, and yeah. you know, a Cookie Monster and these other characters that are around there. There are tenants of mine who said, "I don't want to look." Uh, four Times Square is probably a little bit of the ex exception because it's kind of out in the perimeter, but five Times Square is going to have trouble. Seven is a couple of tenants contemplating leaving will have trouble. 
the Reuters building, if, they, if, if Reuters, Thomson Reuters goes, that's going to be a problem. Uh, there could be a lot of space. So your, your property, 1633, is not really Times Square. No. no. You're, you're out no. of the, uh, the bow tie. Yeah, we're out of the bow tie. Yep, we're out of the bow tie. Yep. Right. Of the bow tie. I mean, I mean, our, our property uh, is, is, is quite unique in that you could, what I talked about before, the, di the, the different types of tenants. Um, it's a two and a half million square foot Class A office building. Uh, but besides the financial services firms and the law firms, which, which we have in there, we've got tenants like Showtime, Warner Music, um, you know, so, so a lot of these entertainment um, and media type uses are, are there. And, and so you have a building, you have a diversity within a building um, of, of industries that, that is, that, you know, it's near Times Square, but it's not in Times Square. So because it sits out, outside. I, 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 you know, it was skirted a little bit, I, but I'd like to talk about the co-working concept. Mm -hmm. Not only uh, because I believe WeWork is the strongest, you know, mm -hmm. they are around, there's no question. But I did a show a couple of months ago with a couple of others. I had this company called Industrious. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're a lot of these co-working companies and, you know, they're niche or they're a little creative, but, you know, they don't have the capitalization or, you know, as a landlord, uh, some some landlords I know said, I won't put them in, you know, and then there are others, you know, who are like Rudin, who's very bullish on it, you know, even. It's What's your like, I, mean, I think that uh, there's a place for them, as Ted said, but uh, they've expanded, in my opinion, too soon, too fast. Yeah, they we're just weary. down. They just downgraded their earnings by seventy-eight yeah. percent. I would say that's a pretty monumental miss, um, and a lot of it is their extensive capex, uh, which they didn't anticipate uh, because landlords don't want to spend the kind of money giving them the right the, the amount to build their space because they're not comfortable with the credit. But but there's no question that they're here to stay. Yeah, yeah, I mean no, it's, it's, I mean, some, it's a niche that's some here size to stay. and iteration. Just yeah. like but the HQ, headquarters companies. Just yeah, like HQ been for and Regis. Yep. A little different concept obviously because it's 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 collaborative, it's twenty first century, it's uh, it's a younger uh, type of crowd. As a matter, by the way, it's social networking as well. There are all kinds of interaction looks between, like a fraternity house. Yeah. Between relationships are established there. Uh, and then they, you know, but how many can you have? How many people are like that? Mm -hmm. Eventually, they they start either start companies and move to real space, or yeah. they find jobs of substance and move to real space. But there, I think. but there is but there is one one thing. Just I'll say about about the, the co working within within normal companies now within traditional businesses, you are you are seeing collaborative space. I mean, I mean, a lot of tenants that are there. You know, as Steve said they're being a little bit more. Um, more efficient on how much office space they take per person, but they are also throwing in th these collaborative type areas where, with, with you know, couches, tables, yeah. um, in, you know, cafes where where their employees can sit and, and, and kind of meet and and generate ideas, and and so, so I think that kind of builds a little what, bit. What, on what that. about the other phenomena, which is you know, many of these companies may have put their back offices or other portions of their business to Long Island City or Brooklyn, you know? How do you see that? It's uh, happening. Yeah. yeah. Everybody can't afford Manhattan. Long, Long Island City's nothing wrong with on it. fire. You know, Macy's just committed to a half a million feet, with, including Bloomingdale's. Right. Uh, 50 Bloomies and half a million feet. And Macy's took another chunk for their studios in uh, the factory building. Um, WeWorks took 250,000 feet in that same distance by a complex. Um, and they're... I mean, Since Norman is not allowed to invest personally on his own mind to leave the borough of Manhattan, I really can't discuss it. But, you know, some of the other uh, funds have gone in there and the REITs have gone to Long Island City and Brooklyn. What's the opinion of a company like you? Well, we've, I mean, we, we've looked, uh, we have a, um, we, we have a, pref, a pref equity fund that, that goes out and looks for opportunities like that. I mean, our, our major investments are trophy. You know, right, you're all class A. Class right. A, but, but we, we have looked, and we, we, we've looked in Brooklyn, uh, even in Long Island City, we, we had an interest in the City Corp building in Long Island City for a while. Uh, we, we do have, have an interest in, in, in a building uh, in Brooklyn, um, in, in one of our funds, so, so we, we've looked. I mean, we're not in there in a major way, but it's certainly something to keep an eye on. What about the office market in Brooklyn? It's uh, in, in Williamsburg and um, at Brooklyn closest to the New York border, it's, it's on fire. Rents have reached eighty, eighty-five dollars a square foot. Even Metro on the Tech? upper floors. No, Metro Tech is, it hasn't achieved those rents, but Metro Tech has come back significantly. 
from the downturn when the chases and, and, and some of their some of the big financial services firms vacated it. Um, it's it's I don't know what the vacancy factor is today, but it's very, very active again. The nice part about Brooklyn is they're a ferry right away from Manhattan. <clears throat> And the subway lines. I mean, you can get to and from in no yeah. time at all. And people are stopping from coming into New York City because, again, there's businesses that are moving out. The quality of life from a living right. I mean, Brooklyn and Queens are 24-7 communities right now. There, there's no question. So they're able to. Yes. Now, what about with regard to uh, what's happening with TI? Uh, with You know, you read in the paper sometimes this perception that it's becoming more of a tenant opportunity than a landlord market. Uh, has, you know, there have been a couple of articles saying that tenants are getting better incentives. It's not, not the way it was. I think, I mean, it's part of a, a, they're not giving away the space. They're yeah. net effect of rents is still profitable to landlords. And while tenants go through periods of time. Are we talking six months? Are we talking eight months? Are we talking? You can't talk anything. There's no prototype. Some tenants will get 12 months, some will get yeah. two years, some will get six months. Yeah. Depends on the size of the deal, depends on what the rent is, is being achieved, depends on the tenant improvement allowance that's being given. At the end of the day, you're not doing a benefit for any of the landlords. The tenants are negotiating yeah, tough I mean, deals. It, I mean, it, you know? it really depends. I mean, but I'd say overall, and I, and I think, you know, uh, Steve and Norm would agree with me that it's, it's, you can't say it's a tenant's market or a landlord's market right now. I think it's, yeah. it's, it's just a strong market that both sides um, you know, have, have a good chance of getting what they want at the end of the day yeah, and just finding a way to get there. That's a perfect analogy. What about foreign money coming in? It, it is flooding. It is not coming in. It is coming in over the ramparts. Um, if, if you look at what's happened, the price of oil has driven the economics of the Middle East uh, to, to get away from their currencies. The chaos that goes on politically has uh, been going on for uh, decades. Um, the, the uh, Japanese money has been sitting in a recession for over a decade. Um, this thing with Britain exiting, uh, you, you and I, many years ago, you asked me the question, what would happen to the New York Stock Exchange when the London Stock Exchange became the major financial source for the world? Well, it hasn't. And we remain as uh, the, the major capital of uh, this planet. Um, foreign money is flooding into this country. I mean, all the money that focused on London is coming this way. Yep. A historic, historically London investor just bought 550 Madison Avenue, first singly owned uh, asset in, in the United States. And, and that's basically a vacant building. It's not, base, not basically. It is, it is, <laughs> it is a totally basic. It is empty. It's it an is. empty building. And they, have look no, what and they have no fear. They're a hundred year old yeah. family. Yeah. And Look what happened to the euro in the last five, six, seven years. Who was sitting here six, seven years ago it was a buck sixty. Um, last night it was a buck thirteen. Um, yeah. it, it is flooding into America. We, we do not give enough credit to the democracy in America, to, to the freedom in America, to um, this incredible capital that all of us live and work in. Um, Europe and, and Asia is uh, starting to recognize that. Um, our biggest single partner is Chinese. Um, we, we've just closed on uh, the second property of, we now have over a million feet with them. Um, and, and they're delighted. So um, we see the more that goes on in the rest of the world is a positive economically for America. Do we see, you know, besides what's happening in downtown and the Hudson Yards, do you see any other, and one Vanderbilt, do you see any other office buildings in the planning stages? There'll, there'll probably be a building uh, in the Trinity Church uh, uh, portfolio. They have a couple of sites. I would assume that uh, when, when the uh, new entity takes over, they'll develop. Right, there's the a combination with the Norges and the church. And, and there's, a, there's a million square foot. There's buildable rights, too, right, on top of yeah, it. Yeah, Heinz will be involved in that. And there's a you million also square have foot. the That'll be built. Um, building two, obviously, we built the Trade Center. Uh, uh, related has several sites. Uh, they bought the Coach site when they moved Coach, so they'll build a building there. Tishman Spire has a two and a half million square foot 
what about the, site. You know, that's a that's a discussion. You know, we we talk about Hudson Yards, we talk about Manhattan West, but you know, you have Tishman, you have Joe Moyni, and you have a couple of other people who have office sites over there. Elliot Spitzer has you know a site that he can build you know office or mixed use. Do you see those markets, especially since they don't have Hudson Yards has the number seven line. If you go to 39th or 40th Street over there. And between 11th and 12th, That's you don't five, have that. six blocks away. Uh, Tishman's probably won't build the building without a significant pre-lease component. So that's not happening. Moynian, I don't believe, will build his building, even though he's announced he's building an inspect. I think he's preparing it with the foundations. He'll cap it, is my opinion, and will not build it without a tenant. Um, I think... Uh, I think there's a company called Kefu and one of the Chinese companies who is supposed to be building a building over there. Again, I don't know, 441, let's not forget 441 Ninth. It's going to be sold by Empire, uh, and it should be, I guess the, the buyer should be designated within the next 30 days. That'll be a complete retrofit and adding a, a FAR of about 150,000 feet. Since I top. worked in that building many, many years ago when it was Hartfield Zodis, I remember it, and then the GHI. Were you an insurance salesman? No. Just curious. But the GHI, you know, that, that building, I mean, at, no, at one time was nothing there. I mean, you know, it was the entrance to the tunnel. Now you're right in the, in the Mecca. You, you need the train, you need the bus line. We owned 449th Avenue for years. Years, I years, remember. Watching 441. Um, Darcy had called on 441. Um, yeah, they're down to five bidders. It'll go, it'll sell, whether it sells at the number. Will it be a foreign wants. bidder, as you were saying, all the foreign money? I, I can almost guarantee that there will be a foreign bidder, whether that's the winner or all of the bidders. I don't there know. There are five non-foreign bidders, but two of them have foreign capital. Yeah. Okay. It's like us. Um, now, but you're seeing, I mean, almost half the, half the capital that's going into, into investments, uh, in, into buildings. Uh, acquisitions seems to be foreign capital right now. I mean, it's creeping up that way. It was it was a third, forty percent. Now it's now it's, it's creeping up even higher. And I think you know, as as Norman said, a lot of the events that have happened overseas, uh, you know, outside the United States, is is only just driving capital here. And it will Sponsor. continue. So it's yeah. not getting better uh, um, across the oceans. Uh, so if I had my crystal apple, which sometimes I have on the show. It would be very shiny. I know you always wear your apple over there. So you feel that we are in for a continued good time in the office market, right? I honestly believe I that. just so putting our money on group, uh, the FIDF, and I told them uh, for the next two or three years um, the office market is going to be solid. I never predict beyond that. Um, to me, the only softness in our market is high-end condos. It's, that's about it. So I'd like to thank Norman, Ted, and the Dean Stephen over here. Huh. Dean Stephen. Dean Stephen. It's almost like Don Stephen. Don Stephen. <laughs> and I'll see you next week. <laughs>